Today is move-in day. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to go from your grill cart into a table. Let's get started. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you already know a little bit of the frustration uh, we've encountered all summer trying to get our custom outdoor table built. And I'll just say, if you haven't seen that, the punchline here is these pre-made cabinets or even custom cabinets don't know the ins and outs of a Kamado. Some of the storage shelves don't fit the accessories. They're not specially designed for that. And so you end up being responsible for every measurement, like how far from the wall, how far from the space, how much height to not have the jotisserie ring hit. These are all things that unfortunately you've just got to uh, figure out yourself and the experts or so-called experts don't provide a lot of help. And one of the areas you'd think they'd provide some help is these are supposed to have been custom made tables specifically for Komodo style grills. But when we received it and we saw, you know, some of that um, support material was very bendy. I was reassured by NatureCast and their installer that this is exactly what you're supposed to have for nearly a 500 pound grill. Well, a week or two later, and the obvious came true is this was not enough support for a Kamado Joe. The classic cracked first, the Big Joe uh, granite cracked second. Uh, and so we removed that out. Uh, we later discovered that they had made an error in ordering the right cabinet, and that was not the proper base for a Kamado style grill that's going to be weighing a lot. So another six to eight weeks later, uh, going through the order process, starting right back at the beginning in the queue, the proper base stations have arrived. And as you can see from a quick clip here, they are reinforced at several different points all the way uh, across the back with wood as well as metal reinforcements. The granite is back as well, has been fixed, and it also now has some metal running the opposite direction. So we should be sitting on a well-supported base. But that means we need to get these back into position. And I've never shown this before, but there's actually a few things you want to pay attention to. It's much easier to adjust right now before the grills are in the table. So we're gonna go through removing the side brackets, um, checking bands and things like that. That'll be much more difficult to get to when it's out. Uh, your internals, take everything out move the grills, put everything back, and a few tips and tricks along the way that'll make it much easier for figuring out where and how to install your grill. So that's what's in store for today. So without further ado, let's get started. We're gonna start removing our side shelves, components, and checking our bands, since again, this is much simpler when they're out and accessible just like this, than trying to work around behind them in a table. Let's get started. Okay, so let's get started on our Komodo Joe Classic 3. So the first thing we're gonna remove is the side shelves. Mine are the upgraded Smokeware side shelves, and they're uh, you know a little bit larger than the stock ones. So if I just drop that back in, you can see you get a little bit more working space, and they look like a million bucks, but they come out and go in exactly the same as stock. So this will actually fit on the Kettle Joe as well, where it looks really good. So we're just gonna pull this out, drop it down, and slide out of the holder so that we can start to remove these brackets. Okay, so using a 10 millimeter wrench, we're just gonna remove these bolts so we can get the brackets off. Take you fast forward while we get these out. Let's make sure you catch the uh, washers on those because we're going to put these back on the sort of spring-loaded uh, screws that are built into the band. Okay, so once those are off, we'll just put the washer back on and tighten the bolts back up. All right, our Joe's side shelves are off, the brackets are off. I'm gonna do the same thing off camera to the big Joe behind me. But before I do that, I'll bring you close and show you what we want to do now with the bands and make sure that everything is tight. We can do that adjustment while it's much easier when the Joe is in this position than trying to work around behind it in the table. Okay, so for this, you're gonna want 17 millimeter wrench to hold the bolts on our bands as well as I believe this is a number eight Allen key. And so if I start to check this here and I move, that's not too bad if I check the bottom. And that, that one is loose. So when I see it moving like that, this bottom one definitely needs to be tight. Another way you can check is when you open your dome, if you see this whole assembly moving up and down, there's definitely a loose band. This does not look too bad, but since our bottom one, uh, I'm getting some movement, I'm definitely gonna take the opportunity to tighten that up. 
All right, so we've got everything off the outside of our Joes that needs to come off. And I'm glad I did check the tightness. So it wasn't too bad on the Classic, but the Big Joe, I got several turns of the socket there. And so that's just a great reminder. Spring and fall, that's what I do mine on. Uh, you know, if you're changing your furnace filter or doing anything like that, just try and set a reminder. Check your bands, spring and fall, since some of those high heat cycles and the weather changing uh, helps that metal expand, contract, and eventually work its way a little bit loose and they need some adjustment. And so it wasn't moving when I opened, so it wasn't in like a dire spot, but left a little bit longer. That could quickly be something when you go to open, uh, you could find yourself with your dome falling right out of your bands and smashing, and you don't want that. So a little PSA, check your bands. So now that we've got our bands tight on our Big Joe, Classic Joe, side shells off, we wanna start uh, removing all the internals. And this is gonna help for a few reasons. One, it's gonna make it much lighter uh, and easier to do that. Plus we're not gonna run the risk of breaking uh, anything by jostling it around. And it'll just give us an opportunity to do a bit of a, a clean on the inside, get everything out, set it aside. So I'll take you fast forward while we remove all of our internals. Then I'll show you a little trick on how to position the Komodo Joe on the feet. Now, if you don't have the Komodo Joe feet, you're definitely gonna want something like that that provides a bit of an air gap. Otherwise, you're going to have a heat sink. And so whatever temperature the surface is that you put it on, whether it's concrete, granite, or something like that, uh, it's going to take longer for your grill to heat up because it's you know directly on that. And or it's going to be transferring those high, high heats directly into the stone. And if um, you know, you're not careful, you can crack the stone underneath and or potentially do uh, damage to the bottom of your joe. So you, no matter what your solution is, you'll want an air gap. And I find those little Komodo feet are more than enough to get some air circulating under there and help make sure we're not gonna damage our joe, our concrete or granite or anything like that. And especially not uh, on wood. Do not install your grill, even with an air gap right above wood as that will uh, cause a fire. Anyways, enough about that. Let's get uh, nice and close. We'll get everything outside of our Joes. Okay, so I've got both grills cleaned out. Just finished the Big Joe, have my feet all ready to go. So let me bring you over to the table now where we're going to uh, position our feet using the ring as a centering guide to try and get us uh, pretty close to the pin for where we actually want our Joes to sit. Okay, so I've dropped our three Komodo feet in like a tripod. And since this is much easier with something light versus trying to get the spacing right with the full weight of your grill, whether it's the Classic or the Big Joe, this ring will give us a, a guide to let us know if we're approximately right. So I was way off there. And so what I can do now is just get the approximate spacing, which will make it very, very close to where we're going to drop our grill in. So I can check spacing left to right, front to back, and that looks pretty good to me. So I'll do the same thing with the Big Joe. And now I know when we go to move in, I'm pretty close to happy with where those feet are and we'll just make any little minor adjustments. All right, the easy part is behind us, but now we've got to do some heavy lifting. So I'm just going to take a minute, get the energy level up, warm back up, uh, since it's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit here today. And even in my new smoking dad sweater, uh, it's not quite enough to fend off the cold. And so we're gonna need some friends now, or in my case, really, really good friends, since this is the fourth time that we've done this exact move into our grill studio. So I might need a little extra incentive to try and attract them. So we're gonna need um, one friend for the classic and two extra friends for the Big Joe. So that's a three person job. So let's see if this works. Uh, boys, brisket. Sorry, fellas, I lied. No brisket, but we are moving some Joes. Oh no. While we're waiting for them to show up, we can wheel our Joes into position. And so what you wanna do is get it as close as possible to the table. So we're going straight up and back. And to make sure the cart doesn't get in the way, I like to lock the feet to help make sure that it's not gonna move around and be something that we uh, potentially stumble on. The other thing I'll show you while we're here is the safe lifting point. And a lot of people think when the shelves are on um, that you can go ahead and lift by the side. But as you saw when we were doing that, these are just little bolts inside of our band. So they are not weight supporting. The other thing you don't want to do is lift by the handle since if you touch this or if it just pops open your dome will fly open and your grill will drop. So the two safe places to lift is on the front 
open up your bottom draft door and if you have some gloves to help make that a little bit easier on the hands, you can get your hands in there and lift straight up. And the other safe lift point is right on the back, the black part of the airlift hinge. You can get your hands on there and give it a good lift. So that's what, exactly where we're gonna uh, handle both of our Komodo Joes, the Classic Joe and the Big Joe, to safely get them up and into position inside of our grill table. Right, so as they say, many hands make light work. And so that was a breeze getting those into position. So now what we want to do is reassemble everything that we took out. So we're gonna start by placing our fire ring right in the bottom, get that close to center, and just check the alignment for your draft door that you can slide your removable ashtray in and out and make sure that's nice and centered, left to right, as well as front to back. For installing the deflector plates, I like to install the first one right in front of where that draft door is. So as air comes in, it's hitting that and moving around the grill evenly uh, versus potentially causing some inconsistencies with our airflow and temperature setup. It's just no right way, wrong way. That's just how I like to do it. And then for spacing, what you wanna do is place the spacing equal on the bottom. Don't worry about the top since everything is spread out and when we pull it in, that alignment will fix itself. So you're looking for about a quarter to, uh, on the Big Joe, nearly a half inch of space on the bottom between all of those bottom pedestals. And then a little hack to do this by yourself if you don't have the spare hands. My spare hands have already left. And so I like to use either toilet paper or uh, some paper towel and make a little bit of a ball up and then wedge that down in behind the pedestal so it pulls everything in and make it much easier to install our uh, ring that's going to hold our firebox in position. So now that we have our multi-piece firebox propped up and away from the base of our Joe, we can take our ring and be easily just sort of drop that into position. And just like that, it's installed. And those Kleenex pieces or paper towel will burn up during some of our high heat cooks. Well, I certainly hope this is the last time we're talking about grill studio tables, cracks, because we are back in and ready to go. I hope you really enjoyed this one. But before I let you go, quick reminder for the month of November, I am doing a giveaway for a brand new Komodo Joe Kettle Joe, along with the upgraded side shells from Smokeware. All you need to do is hit subscribe and comment on any video I release for the month of November, and you're entered for your chance to win. Be sure to check out my giveaway post for complete rules and regulations to make sure there's nothing I'm forgetting, but good luck to everyone who's already entered, and there's still plenty of time to jump in on the action if you haven't already. That's about it for today though. So if you enjoyed this one, please let YouTube know, smash that thumbs up button and let me know by hitting subscribe, especially since it increases your chances of winning uh, to catch future videos. This is it for today though. I'm James from Smoking Dead Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid, fire it up.